7.2, Municipal Resolution in Support of Basic Income for the City of Hamilton. Councillor McMeekin, would you please present your motion? Yes, thanks, uh, uh, <coughs> Your Worship. Uh, moved by myself, uh, my motion is moved uh, by me and seconded by Councillor Maureen Wilson. Um, before I read it, I, I just want to uh, have something important to say. Can you put the motion on the floor, please, and so that we all sure. know what you're talking I'll, I'll about, it. and then I'll you read can... It? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll read it. Um, whereas the City of Hamilton recognizes the social and economic challenges faced by its residents that have a detrimental impact on the determinants of health, including income inequality, poverty, inadequate housing, and precarious employment, whereas it is the responsibility of the City of Hamilton to strive for the well-being and prosperity of all its residents, which includes ensuring access to basic needs and opportunities to improve health. Whereas through addressing poverty and improving access to health care, a guaranteed livable basic income can potentially reduce health care costs, enabling people to afford preventive care and timely treatments while preventing more costly health care interventions, leading to better overall pop population health. Whereas a basic income program was tested in Hamilton during the Ontario basic income pilot, you'll remember that, uh, Your Worship, between 2017 and 2019, and more than 1,000 local residents reported positive outcomes, including <coughs> the alleviation of food and housing insecurity, improved physical and mental health, financial stability, social equity, and greater connection to the labor market. Whereas the federal budget office, upon review, reviewing the concept of a national guaranteed basic income program determined it could, if properly set out, be a major economic driver to the Canadian economy. And whereas the basic income program can complement and enhance existing social support systems, ensuring a comprehensive and inclusive approach to addressing the needs of Hamilton residents, including persons with disability, and aligns and complements the City of Hamilton's Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan. Therefore, be it resolved that the City of Hamilton supports the concept of a guaranteed livable basic income to combat poverty, income inequality, and economic insecurity within our community and supports the continued advocacy of the basic uh, income Hamilton Working Group under the auspices of the Hamilton Roundtable for Poverty Reduction to share research <clears throat> and the unique experiences of local residents who participated in the Ontario Basic Income Pilot Project. That the city, <clears throat> further, that the city calls upon the provincial and federal governments to collaborate, it's a good word these days, to implement a national guaranteed livable basic income program. Further, that Hamilton City Council directs the office of the mayor to write a letter to the prime minister, local members of parliament and the Senate, the premier of Ontario, local members of the Legislative Assembly of Ontario, calling on these orders of government to work collaboratively towards implementing a national guaranteed livable basic income to eradicate poverty and, and hopefully homelessness and ensure everyone has sufficient income to meet their basic needs. And that the City of Hamilton encourages other municipalities across the province and the country to join in advocating for a guaranteed livable basic income as a key policy tool in the fight against poverty and inequality. And to this end, Hamilton City Council will advocate through its representatives at the Association of Municipalities of Ontario and the Canadian Federation of Municipalities for guaranteed livable basic income resolutions at meetings of these organizations. And now you can speak, speak to your resolution if you so desire, Councillor okay. McMeekin, thanks so much. Thank you. Well, before I speak, I have something important to say. <laughs> it's an old, old comedy line, but I thought it would fit here. Um, a friend of mine once said, um, if instead of flowers, we could plant a beautiful thought in the heart of a friend, that would be to give as the angels give. That friend was Tommy Douglas over a glass of water and a tea. 
and um, we we know of, of his commitment. Um, I uh, we're privileged this morning to have somebody who uh, has a history of planting beautiful thoughts in our hearts. Uh, his name is Tom Cooper. He's in the audience. Uh, he's the staffer for the uh, one of the staffers for the Roundtable on Poverty, and. Uh, Tom was instrumental in uh, encouraging a former provincial government to move forward on a pilot project on basic income. And, uh, and he and I had the privilege of working together to ensure that Hamilton was part of that, that pilot. Um, Tom has, uh, Tom, just can you just wave to us? <laughs> Thanks. Tom uh, has written a very uh, moving, uh, very uh, important letter which traces, um, uh, Your Worship, uh, some of the local history of this, uh, this issue. And um, uh, Tom, thank you for that, and thank you for all your work. Um, Tom played a major role in, in, in drafting this motion, he and I, which he and I wrote together. So with that said, uh, let, let me add some additional history, because people may wonder how all of this got started. It started uh, politically in 1969 when the Honorable Robert Stanfield the leader of the Progressive Conservative Party, uh, said that if his government was elected, he would implement a basic income program. They weren't elected. It didn't happen. Subsequently, um, this has a Hamilton connection, Mark Lalonde and uh, the Honorable John Monroe advocated uh, for a basic income program. And um, Pierre Trudeau said he was in favor of it. The difficulty was there was a minority government. Sometimes minority governments are, are tough things to uh, work through. So that, it, it, for whatever reason or series of reasons, it didn't work. Uh, later, um, a conservative senator, Hugh Siegel, everybody here I think knows Hugh. Yeah, we, re we recruited uh, him to uh, uh, provincially to guide the uh, pilot outline. And, um, and uh, I think it's important to get trace those routes. And uh, all across the country, Moncton, Fredericton, I think there's a municipality in every province Winnipeg. that's passed a motion. Winnipeg, uh, um, in Prince Edward Island, the Legislative Assembly unanimously, all three parties there, uh, voted uh, a couple years ago to ask the federal government to implement a province-wide pilot. And um, so that remains, uh, remains there. Wayne Easter, who chaired the Parliamentary Budget Office, federal, he didn't run again, um, he and his team did a study and indicated that if properly done, basic income would be an economic boon to the Canadian economy. And... Um, he, um, he did some really good work there. Um, so it, it remains as, a, as an objective. Um, you know, I could go into the figures, uh, single person, OW, ODSP, uh, family, uh, mom or dad with two kids, and the gaps, they're, they're stark. Um, and I could suggest that the gap between the richest of us and the rest of us continues to grow. That's uh, highlighted in the uh, continuing saga of Code Red in Hamilton, uh, where I'm, I'm told by the author we're in worse shape now than we were 10 years ago. Um, so basic income could help uh, cover the cost of basic necessities. As MP Easter said, uh, money wouldn't be spent uh, buying our RRSPs. Moms would be spending and dads would be spending it on diapers for the kids, nutritious food, maybe paying off debts. Some would go back to school. And Tom outlines in, in very clever uh, detail uh, the positive impact uh, of um, this here. So look. Councillor McMeekin, Councilor you have um, about a minute and a half left um, because it took five minutes for you to read your yeah, motion, you know, so well, I'm giving you a bit of leeway. I, I would have dispensed, but I, I appreciate that. I'll, I'll sum up and then maybe speak again, depending okay. on what happens. Um, yeah, I think it's important that we think big. This is something important that we can do that will make a real difference in the lives of people right across this country. Um, it can be an economic driver, it can change. We can do something historic if this, uh, coupled with 
FCM and uh, AMO and other municipalities across the country can convince the federal government to move on this. This would change lives. This would save lives. This would, uh, in, in many cases, remove many, many people from poverty. It would allow people to compete in the market, perhaps, for, for rental accommodation. It would make a difference. So I will stop there and, um, and just urge um, my colleagues to... Um, and we talk a lot about collaboration. We talk a lot about crisis. Gosh, we named everything a crisis. Homelessness, drug addiction, climate change. What else? Brad, you had a whole bunch of them. But mental health, um, you know, and, and so when we do that, we've got to act like it is a crisis. And, and this, I would say, my friends around this horseshoe, is an, is an opportunity to ask the, the two senior levels of government, we're often critical of them, to embrace this scheme and to move forward in a way that will benefit Canadians and uh, most importantly, the, the good people we're privileged to represent. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for your tolerance. Thank you, uh, Councillor McMeekin, for your motion. We have a uh, growing speakers list, so I'm going to try to keep it at five minutes each. Uh, and we are starting with Councillor Nan. Thank you, Mayor. I'll be very brief, and uh, thank you, Councillor McMeekin, for bringing forward the motion and your seconder as well. Um, you know, around the table and throughout the city, in in our staff on our staff side, we often speak about the need for upstream solutions. And basic income is exactly that. And it delivered uh, not only tremendous impact, it actually transformed lives uh, of those thousand residents who had the fortune of participating in the basic income pilot that was abruptly ended in 2019. Many Ward 3 residents were among those thousand in the pilot. And when it abruptly ended, it created an irresponsible tailspin for many of those who participated. And I would say was incredibly harmful. Uh, it was systematic harm uh, imposed on the participants of the program. And that is a tremendous shame. Uh, so I'm happy to support the, the call for this collaborative action coming uh, particularly from uh, the councillor and also specifically around asking for collaboration from higher levels of government to put in place a basic income program to help uh, transform lives and actually enable us to have communities where our residents are thriving. And uh, that's fundamentally a, a priority for this council and very much a priority for us to live into the motto of our municipality. So happy to support. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nan. Uh, Councillor Maureen Wilson, please. Thank you, Chair. If I could ask through you if GM Burden is um, in attendance, virtually or otherwise. I don't see GM Burden on our list up. Oh, yes, she is. Uh, GM Burden, are you uh, available? There you are. Yes, she is. Thank you. Um, to my colleagues, uh, in March of this year, we received a special presentation um, from Mr. Steve Pomeroy um, in advance of us moving um, to affirm uh, our housing investment sustainability roadmap. And it was during that presentation, and I'd, I'm seeking clarification or confirmation rather from GM Burden, um, where Mr. Pomeroy pointed to what would appear to be an anomaly um, in um, affordability and core housing need. And he uh, looked at uh, 2021 census data and that data suggested a substantial improvement in renter core housing need. Um, in Hamilton, a decline of 22, just over 2,000 households. It was a statistical aberration and remains a statistical aberration, but it was deliberate um, as a consequence of a decision made by our federal government. So through the chair to GM Burden, I was wondering if you could uh, remind us of the, the, the reason behind that aberration um, and how it does speak to the potential of um, and the relationship between income and uh, housing policy. Please and thank you. Thank you. GM Burden, please. Thank you. Angie Burden, General Manager of Healthy and Safe Communities. Through you, Mayor, to the Councillor. 
what you are saying is correct in that many individuals were receiving uh, CERB, and to be frank, I can't remember the exact acronym of CERB, but the federal benefit for individuals who were not able to be working uh, during the pandemic. And it functioned almost like a basic income pilot in that it was time limited, distributed for a while, and then uh, rescinded. And it is in fact that um, anomaly that Councillor Wilson is re referencing that where the need for core housing or those individuals in core housing need decreased um, and it was has been attributed now to the receipt of the CERB. Um, so does lend support for a basic income? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that confirmation because it, it is not a ideological um, uh, framing. It's a fact um, that income policy is housing policy. And on the uh, further to facts, if I could kindly read uh, for my colleagues and anyone attending um, something from Statistics Canada. Over the first three quarters of 2020, Disposable income for the lowest income households increased 36.8%, more than for any other households. And at the same time, the youngest households recorded the largest gain in their net worth, 9.8% increase. These changes were driven by unprecedented increases in transfers to households as the value of of government COVID-19 support measures exceeded losses in wages and salaries and self-employment income. As the pandemic unfolded in Canada, households experienced extraordinary changes in their economic well-being. Um, I'm reading this again to underscore that um, there is a role for government, um, that uh, this aberration should become the norm because the evidence is clear in that it provided a platform with the, uh, beneath which people did not fall. And to that point, if I could, um, uh, Hugh Siegel, um, former senator, now retired, uh, former principal secretary to a conservative prime minister of Canada, and uh, in my opinion, a, a great Canadian, um, he, he wrote this book called Bootstraps Need Boots one Tory's lonely fight to end poverty in Canada, in which he is asked why would a Conservative support historically and continuously um, a guaranteed income? And he said because it just makes sense on every pillar, economically, socially, um, and otherwise. And if I could read just a reminder that uh, the Government of Ontario decided to launch a three-year pilot project in Thunder Bay, Hamilton, and Lindsay following many of the recommendations that came from his discussion paper. Participant recruitment began in the spring of 2017. Sadly, even though 4,000 people had been recruited, the entire effort was cancelled in July 2018 by the newly elected Progressive Conservatives. This was a shocking breach of faith by the government, and it signaled the desertion of any commitment whatsoever to an evidence-based decision-making approach to welfare well for it, welfare reform. I'm very pleased to second this motion. Um, I think we have to repeat this um, because it is at the core of health and well-being and I thank the mover for bringing it forward at this time. Thanks, Councillor Wilson. Uh, Councillor Jackson, please. Thanks, uh, Mayor Horvath. Um, I'm going to uh, support um, this motion primarily because the former Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, our current Ward 15 Councillor, Ted McMeekin, has brought this forward, and I know he was integral and instrumental in the former McGinty win years of uh, being a strong supporter of the basic income program. I believe our City of Hamilton, and I was on the Council then, uh, that I believe we may have been the first municipality in Ontario. If not, we were one of the first. I'm getting nodding heads from the former minister that we were the first. I remember at the time I needed greater information and understanding of a basic income. And I remember having chats with Tom Cooper, our, um, our, our lead executive director and staffer of the Round Table on Poverty. And after a nice chit chat with him, he uh, convinced me beyond a shadow of a doubt why this was important. 
All I'm going to say is I think Councillor Nan is our FCM representative. Uh, we'll have more fertile ground at the federal level. I'm hoping that our AMO representative, Councillor Hwang, can pull some rabbits out of a hat and work her wonderful magic at the provincial level. Because if I recall, when this current PC government got elected five years ago, within a few months they cancelled their involvement in the program. So I'm not holding out much hope from the provincial level, but we, as long as we have hope, we must pursue and hopefully we'll, maybe the federal government will eventually lead the way. Regardless, uh, the municipality, I think, has to show the leadership and I want to thank Councillor McMeekin again for bringing it forward. Thanks, Mayor Horvath. Thank you, Councillor Jackson. Uh, Councillor Kassar, please. Thank you, Mayor Horvath. Be very brief. I uh, just wanted to build on the comments Councillor Maureen Wilson said, specifically about this is an ideological, is not an ideological framework, it's facts. Uh, two quick facts. One was reading a report recently and it identified that Ward 12 had the highest average income in Hamilton. Um, uh, also true is that there is poverty all across our city, including in Ward 12. There are two city housing locations and there is something called Ancaster Community Services, which does too much work. They do great work, but too much work in the sense of the number of families that they need to support throughout the year. It's in the hundreds. So I just want to highlight that, that this is not a lower city issue. It is not a specific ward issue. It is all across and even in Ward 12, and I know that many Ward 12 people would not think about this topic, uh, but it's there, it's real, and it's very important, and I very much support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kassar. Councillor Pauls, please. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple of questions. Uh, basic income, I understand it, you know, helping people. But I'm wondering, is this a change of language from welfare or DSP? Are they going to eliminate uh, the ODSP and just give a basic income? So I'm not sure where we're at. Uh, the province, uh, did they increase the ODSP to increase the basic income? I I'm not sure. So that's why I really don't understand. And does anybody, uh, Councillor McMeekin, so, can yes, you? Yes, we'll, we'll ask uh, Councillor McMeekin to uh, uh, clarify those issues yes. if, uh, if, he's, if he can. Yeah, Thank I you. don't want to get into the weeds on this, which is why we're asking for the uh, review and collaboration. Um, it's a complex issue. Right. Um, and uh, some of the basic supports, for example, uh, the uh, uh, Ontario Child Benefit, was probably, you, you remember, Your Worship, uh, the single most significant thing that uh, actually came out of the, the Women's Caucus. And, uh, you know, you know, turn it over to the women at Queen's Park and things get done usually much quicker. Anyhow, um, it, uh, it's, not, it's a weed kind of issue. Uh, I suspect that the, the child care and uh, there would be some other adjustments. It would, of course, be a tax-based thing. Uh, there would be a level where at uh, some point uh, there would be some sort of clawback. Um, there, there was some work done on that. I hesitate to necessarily to share it, but it looked, uh, Wayne Easter had uh, some pretty good ideas about, uh, I think the basic income would be $20,000 and you could earn another 20 before you had to worry about anything being clawed back. After that, there was a designated uh, a formula. Um, but that was never brought into law, so that would have to be reviewed again. Um, but there's uh, there's a basic income program in Quebec, by the way, just uh, for the information of some here. 61% uh, of uh, those polled in Alberta uh, say they're in favor, and 75% okay, so in Okay, so, so Councillor McMeekin, yeah. if I could just ask, we're, we're sticking to the question about uh, yeah. uh, what, how does it impact Ontario Disability Support Programs uh, and uh, Ontario Works, and the, I think that the point is it depends yeah. on the design of e the program. Exactly. And we're not, sorry, we're not designing the program right. here, and we're not speaking to the design of a program. Uh, just uh, the motion, if I if I may, to, uh, yeah. on behalf of the mover and the seconder, is to say that we support the concept idea of a basic income program and asking the other orders of government to uh, 
uh, to, I, I, to actually right. begin and the process of putting it in place. I understand that, and I support it as well. But when we say the government canceled it, uh, they had the reasons maybe why they canceled. Maybe they gave more money for uh, ODSP. We don't know. So it is a, a, a complex issue, and uh, I will support it, of course, because I think we all uh, need uh, this. But uh, I just want to make sure that the language is not changed from ODSP to uh, basic, uh, basic income, so it would be the same thing. So it is a complex, and I just wanted to put that out, and I will support it. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Councillor Pauls. Call, Councillor Clark, please. Councillor Clark, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, you know, it, it's been my experience that if you want to get really good public policy, you ensure that the discussion is nonpartisan, and that. The members that are having those discussions are not speaking to an ideological position, um, which I believe is what Councillor Wilson uh, was re referencing. Um, but unfortunately, uh, far too often we see ideology across our, our parliaments in Canada. Uh, this motion uh, is asking that we begin having those discussions. And my hope would be that we could rise above the partisan differences of the political parties and stop trying to gain favor by uh, throwing opposing parties under the bus because it suits us. Rather, let's begin the discussion in terms of... Let's Order, please. Go ahead, Councillor Clark. I did admit, listen, Councillor, when you spoke. Um, it's important that we begin this discussion. Uh, I was personally disappointed when they canceled it because it was a pilot. Why would you cancel a pilot midstream without having the assessment completed? Uh, that made no sense to me, and to this day, it still makes no sense to me. Um, but what municipalities who are signing on to motions uh, that, that um, I almost called them Minister, Councillor uh, McMeekin is proposing is that we begin those discussions. We start having those discussions. How are we going to create a system? And not just in a couple of provinces, but across the country uh, that provides that type of basic income. I don't know how it would roll out in a province with all the different programs that, that we have in different provinces, but if we don't begin having that discussion, we will never know. Uh, thanks, Councillor Clark. Uh, I don't see any further first-time speakers. Uh, I'm going to ask Councillor Kretsch to take the floor very, uh, take the chair rather very briefly. Um, I just, I, uh, I, I want to say first of all, following on this con conversation about, uh, you know, about partisanship and ideology. Um, I believe that our job here at the municipal level is to lead with idealism, not ideology. Is to lead with the can what we can do together, not what our differences are. And I think that serves our po our public uh, better than anything, because I think we would all agree that um, lots of people don't have any, you know, political per particular political bent or belief. But what they want is a city uh, that um, that they can be proud of, that they can find joy in, uh, that they have uh, their needs met and their services provided, uh, and uh, that that leads with respect and uh, uh, and thoughtfulness. And so uh, I would say that kind of overall. Um, I did have the opportunity to f host some of the folks uh, that were participating in the uh, basic income uh, program and uh, heard their stories, and they were very moving. Uh, and uh, it, it was uh, it was quite an experience. I just wanted to share that really briefly. Um, you know, it's yesterday, not yesterday, earlier this week, I was uh, touring a, a local program, a men's uh, housing program, in fact, uh, the YMCA. And they shared with me a story of the of the impact of some funding that they received. I'm not sure if folks understand how the program works over there, but these are house, these are basically very small men's units. So they're permanent housing, they're men's units, but there are no real services provided uh, at the at the men's uh, uh, residence. During COVID, they received a grant uh, from uh, Trillium, I believe, to um, to provide 
at least some basic meals, right, so that people could be fed. Uh, and they shared with me the experience that they had, which was that many, many fewer incidents of crisis occurred, uh, that uh, people going off their meds and not, you know, staying well in terms of mental health uh, reduced. Uh, and this is something that they observed, you know, just from that very small amount of funding that they received to provide some basic needs, and uh, for, particularly for food security. And when we had the conversation, there was a, uh, you know, a, an acknowledgement of the fact that that food security, uh, or food insecurity, actually leads uh, significantly or contributes significantly uh, to mental health uh, instability and crisis. And so. When we think about these issues, they're all tied together, uh, and uh, a basic income is something that would provide people with an opportunity to have uh, the ba their basic needs met, which is why it's called uh, basic income. Uh, so I, I wanted to share that because I, I think that, you know, as uh, Councillor Maureen Wilson mentioned and, uh, and uh, GM Burden uh, affirmed, this is it's bigger than than simply. Uh, a basic income. It's it's a it's the root of some of the very desperate challenges that our, our fellow residents uh, in Hamilton are facing, and as we've often said on any one of those topics, as Councillor Clark brought forward the emergency, um, the emergency resolution, th these things are interdependent, um, and they are there's something that we need other orders of government to help us with and I think this is this motion I want to thank the mover and seconder for bringing it forward is uh, as a way of, of starting to you know, uh, put out there that the federal order of government has the best capacity to impact the housing homelessness particular particularly or houselessness uh, scenario that exists not just here but as Councillor Nan and I uh, le learned and probably we already knew um, is happening around the country in every province in every community big small rural urban suburban um, this is ab absolutely a national crisis and I think this motion reminds the federal government that they have a role to play here and I appreciate it thanks so much Councillor Kretsch Take thank the chair back. Yes, thank yeah. you. Uh, Councillor McMeekin, for a second time, please. Thanks very much, Your Worship. I want to thank everyone who has uh, uh, spoken to this, and my seconder uh, in particular for her uh, wise uh, counsel through this and advice. Uh, in case anybody missed it, I started with Tommy Douglas. I went to Robert Stanfield. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and, and the senator, and then I finished with the local connection with John Monroe and, and Milan <laughs> to highlight the hopefulness around nonpartisan view. And uh, I completely agree with Councillor Clark when he uh, suggests that that's the way to go, and it is indeed. In fact, it's the only way to go if we're going to get it done. Um, the one concern I, I, I did have that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, 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 it counts where uh, Paul's raised it. Well, you know, the government must have had a good reason to, uh, they didn't have a good reason. In fact, they promised in the campaign they'd see it through to its fulfillment in order to have an accurate evaluation of what uh, what uh, the program uh, could, uh, could benefit. So with that, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you to all. Um, I'm hoping this, this passes with overwhelming support and uh, and that our two wonderful reps at uh, AMO and FCM will continue, as they always do, uh, to uh, advocate strongly for uh, well, everyone, everyone they represent, but particularly those who are vulnerable in our community. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, thanks, Councillor McMeekin. Seeing no further uh, speakers to this item, I'll now call for the vote. That carries 16 to 0. Thanks very much. Uh, congratulations, um, Councillors McMeekin and Wilson, on a successful motion.